Now with everything here freed up, I want to start working on getting this intake manifold off. First thing is I need to get the throttle body off. It has some, um, the throttle body has four of these five mil hex bits. Now there's a few things connected around here. So you've got the PVC pipe that went up to the rocker. Um, you've got some of these coolant pipes that connect up. So I'm gonna just pull these out of the way. You can, it is unattached from the other end. So you can kind of feed it through or you can disconnect it from here. At the back of the throttle body, there is another coolant connection. It's a bit hard to see, but it's just there. And it's similar to on the thermostat housing. There's a little plastic sleeve that pops up. That's it there. With all four bolts undone, you can pull this out of the way. Then it's a bit easier to get to this um, connector here. Now there's usually a little tab that you can press here and slide it out, but this one looks like it's been damaged. So that does have a broken clip on it. So it's something to think about when we put it back together. And somehow I don't think they write crews on them from the factory, so it looks like that may have been replaced at some time. Now there is a rubber seal that sits around here. Um, that seal's typically in good condition and you can reuse it. Um, but if it's perished, obviously replace it. With the throttle body removed, you can now see and access these two 12 mil bolts here. So those are the first two bolts of the intake manifold. Now it's very difficult to show you on camera, but down in here, here and here, there's three more bolts along the intake manifold. Um, to get to those, I'm just gonna move some of these things out of the way. That's the fuel connection. I'll leave that to a little bit later. This evaporative valve, this evaporative purge valve. I'm just gonna unplug it and see if I can just pull it out of the way. With a extension and a 12 mil socket, you'll be able to put it onto the bolt there. You'll just have to feel it around and then you can run that bolt out. Now those bolts have come loose, but they're just sitting down in there. Um, they're a bit hard to get, but you can reach down and grab them. Um, they're not going anywhere. They'll come out with the intake manifold and we can fix that problem up later. While I'm here, I'm also gonna go around, to unplug these couple of sensors. Some wiring here, we pull that one out and that unplugs there as well. You can pull this wire off off the side here. Just gonna undo the um, two connectors here. And you just need to peel back that yellow section. Then there's a part in there you can press. So just to show you that, this is the part that you press and that yellow section will 
locked back in place like that so what you're needing to do is slide that yellow little locking tab out then you can squeeze it and release the clip same for this one here I'm also going to undo the wiring just from the front of the engine here. So you pull it out of there. There's um, a plug for your oil sensor and a plug for the air conditioning compressor. Now that can just be moved out of the way and give us a bit more room. Now at the other end of the intake manifold, you will have the brake booster vacuum line now there's normally a little connector in there that you just squeeze the sides of and then it can pop off this one's been replaced just with some tubing so yours should look different to this one and this is now going to be a little bit more difficult to get out but this one has just literally been replaced with um, a pipe that's been slipped on now there's two 12 mil bolts in on this side like there were on the other side. So the last thing we need to remove before we can take the intake manifold off is this fuel line. Um, now there's a little collar that sits under here, if we press that up, up like that, now it sits up tight, up into there, we can just pull the fuel line off. Be prepared for a little bit of fuel to come out, um, it's usually only a little bit of a drip, and then we can just stick the fuel line up and out of the way. With that, there may be a few clips and clamps that we're going to need to undo. Like I can just see here that this wiring connector needs to come out. And there's another plug at the back here that I can now feel. So taking this intake manifold off, um, it looks like that somebody's had an issue here with an intake manifold not sealing up because this looks like a homemade cork gasket. There is the original seals in here so um, this might be something that I need to check out before we put it back together if there's been a problem in the past. Not real happy to put it back like that. There is a bracket that's sitting off on the side of this thermostat housing that's this one here um, it's just one 10 mil nut to take this bracket off I'm going to take it off because it's going to catch up on things as I try and lift the cylinder head off just had that lower part on there that was going to catch on all of this um, so I'm just looking that that can now lift up quite free so one of the final steps now is going to be the 10 head bolts. So these head bolts are a um, E12 Torx bit. Now when we do these up they normally start from the middle and we kind of wind ourselves out in terms of a tightening sequence. So to undo this I'm going to start from sort of from here and spiral my way inwards. Initially I just want to crack the tension off them until they're all loose and then I can just zip them out quickly. So I'm just cracking the tension off them.
Now that all of these have just been loosened off, I can just zip them out. Now you can just pull them up and get them out of the way. These are a throwaway item. So with all those bolts undone, the head should be able to come off. Um, usually you just need to give it a little bit of a rock. Um, you sometimes will get some coolant that's going to spill out into the cylinders. It's fairly heavy, so have somewhere that you're going to put it. Now we can see our cylinder head is off. Here's our old gasket. So I like to have a little look if there's any obvious failure points. Um, look, it's hard to see. There's nothing that's been blown out, so that's a, a pretty good sign. Looking in here, these two cylinders look to be um, quite clean compared to that one. So I imagine there was a coolant leak into these cylinders. We're also getting oil and coolant together so I imagine there was a failure around where this here and here is where the oil pressure comes up through the block so I imagine we're getting a failure through there as well I can't look at this and say oh that's all oily so that's where it leaked because as you take the tension off um, oil and coolant and things move around anyway cylinder. with the cylinder head off um, I like to tip them over and have a look at this side here. So obviously the cams are in here, so we've got some valves that are open and etc. Um, it's actually looking relatively clean. I mean, obviously this car's not new and the engine's been uh, being well used, but um, I'm not seeing any obvious damage. I'm having a little look around where the valves seats are looking for any potential cracks um it does look i don't know if it comes up on the camera but it does look pretty crusty around here this cylinder head is about to go off to the machine shop so um, to get it ready for that i just want to take the cams out and any sensors and things off it so it's easier for them